Every morning as the sun rises, I make some coffee, bring up the anchor, and get underway. The sea slowly drifts by. Coastlines blur from one shape to the next until our destination gradually comes into view. Every day a new anchorage, every day a new journey. I love being on the move. I love the continual sense of purpose that I feel and the fact that as one adventure ends, the next begins. But traveling day in and day out in remote parts of the world means that if problems with the boat arise, it can be pretty difficult to figure out a solution. The Ionian Islands of Greece, where we've been exploring the past couple weeks, are known for their giant cliffs, stunning scenery, and picturesque villages. But these villages, while beautiful, are not the easiest place to track down boat parts. My backpack's a little more full than I thought it was gonna be. And when the issue could be life-threatening, we need to figure out a way to address it, no matter how inconvenient. We are gonna try to run to some shelter. I don't think we're at a huge risk of fire. So we are off to a town called Agios Nicoleos. And the reason we're going there is we want to explore the blue caves. There's multiple blue caves throughout Greece, and one of the prettiest sets of blue caves is here on the north end of Zakynthos. They're blue caves because the water is so blue that when the sun hits the water in just the right way, the insides of the caves actually turn blue. little port actually reminds me a lot of small town Maine. I get the feeling it's that kind of place where there's like one taxi driver and everyone knows his name. <laughs> the harbor at Agios Nikolaos is too small to anchor in, but according to Navali, my favorite app for sailing in the med, a local restaurant owner named Kostas offers mooring balls for free to visiting yachts as long as they eat at his restaurant. I called Kostas earlier that morning and he said that he had a mooring ball available and he'd meet us on our way into the harbor. Hello, are you Kostas? Oh, okay. If you will follow me. Okay. I will give you a buoy with a strong line. You put it in the front, and it's got salt. Okay, great. Okay. So follow me. Boy, that's that's very shallow. Uh huh. Can you tell him that we draw just under two meters? We draw two meters. We have six meters. Here. Six meters. My heart is pounding because this is definitely the closest to shore we've ever anchored. Okay, where is Where is the crate? Okay. Good job. Very good. You got it? Yeah. Not quite yet. Okay. Okay. That's it. Okay. Perfect. Well, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your help. <laughs> uh, this is so close to shore, I can't believe it's six yes. meters here. Wow. Yes, yes, a very deep sea. Wow. So uh, they brought us in, I mean, how far are we from the shore, bud? Like 60 feet, yeah. 70 feet from the beach? He said this was six meters. That's like 20 feet. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe the water is very, very, very clear. Where, where are you going, Bozo? What's your plan, Bozo? He's like, I'm going to shore. Dude, Oso is like winning this race. <laughs> Oso, for living on a boat, you're kind of a pansy when it comes to the water. Hey, baby. Like many other coastal towns in Greece, Agios Nikolaos finds itself at a crossroads. Once predominantly a fishing village, tourism has now taken over as the town's economic backbone. But while tour boats now outnumber fishing boats, you can still feel whispers of the town's original identity. With the local restaurants relying on a constant supply of freshly caught fish to keep their menus authentic, they're able to keep a community of local fishermen employed. And this symbiotic relationship preserves a piece of the town's tradition, even as tourism in the Ionian Islands continues to grow year after year. All right, cheers, buddy. 
This is called mussel saganaki, and I guess it's like feta with tomato and mussels. That's really very, very flavorful. It's like a meal. Holy moly. Wow. Now we got it. Wow. <laughs> that looks delicious. <laughs> Buddy, we got a lot of food. We got a lot of food. Oh my god. <laughs> well, we can swim it off on our swim back home. Yeah, sure. <laughs> This is definitely the closest we've ever been to land. Yeah. Like I can hear people's conversations. Yeah. I heard a knock on the hole, and I heard another knock on the hole, and I was like, oh, someone's trying to board. These people are going down. I get up. And these three rental boats are like rafted together on a mooring boat and they're just like bopping into the boat. What happened is the wind is so dead that everything's just adrift. The boats aren't spaced enough to not bop into each other if they go drifting in different directions. Everything's moving so slowly that if we do bump again, it's gonna be a non-event. Is that dad? So we are getting underway early this morning. We checked with Costas and it looks like they don't have a mooring ball for us for anything more than one night. And that's okay because the blue caves where we're gonna go kayaking today, it's a little bit far, so it's gonna be a long kayak. So we're just gonna take Atticus over there, anchor close by, and then have a shorter kayak. But we gotta get there early to try to beat the tour boats because it's a very popular tourist destination. Hi Oso. You ready to go? Okay, Jordan's handling the maneuvering pretty smoothly so far. It is super tight quarters and there are mooring balls and mooring lines everywhere. Lots of boats really close to each other, but uh, so far so good. All right, yeah, so you go up to the bow, stand by to anchor. It's very steep too, so we gotta find a spot with sand that's not too deep, that's not too close to the cliffs. Okay, yeah, I see sand right underneath us. Really pretty spot. Yeah, you yeah. Better get in there before. I think that's the trick, is that this will be super safe if we just aren't here super long, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Hi, baby. Hi, baby, it's okay, I'm back. These blue caves, along with many of the other beautiful cliffs and caves that we've seen here in Greece, are examples of karst formations, where the limestone is gradually dissolved by slightly acidic water over time. And in fact, a lot of the iconic landscapes in the world are karst formations, such as Halong Bay in Vietnam, Gilin, China, and even the cenotes in the Yucatan Peninsula, Mexico, which we were able to explore years ago. Man, look at the water. That's why they call these the blue caves, what? right there. Like yeah, it does look as if it's glowing, but it's just the light and the water clarity. Okay, well, a ferry just went by outside, a big one, and I'm sure they're gonna have a lot of weight, so we gotta, we gotta back out of this cave. Yeah, that's one thing I really like about the kayak is Every little nook and cranny is like a cool thing to explore. Yeah. In a power boat, even in the dinghy, all this would be a little bit less than ideal. In the kayak, it's like, let's poke in there. Let's see what that's all about. You having fun? Yeah, you like caves and kayaks. You going in? Yeah. Well, it was turning into a straight up zoo over there, so we just got back to Atticus and booked it as soon as we could. We are on our way to Zakintos, the main town of Zakintos. It's not confusing at all. Zakintos, Zakintos. And we're gonna anchor right outside the town. <laughs> She's like, oh, we're here. 
So the reason that we came to Zakintos is because I actually found a pretty serious problem with our alternator. Basically with this insane heat that we've been getting, the alternator has been heating up a lot. And not just the alternator, but the space around the alternator, the cables, even the plywood, the actual bulkheads of the engine compartment, it's all getting way too hot. Now, it only gets too hot when the alternator is actively charging the batteries. And I have tested it by running the engine and charging the batteries with the engine compartment open, and it doesn't get too hot if there's plenty of ventilation. But once I close everything up on these really hot days, I think the ambient temperature in that engine compartment is just too high. And so it doesn't dissipate heat. And so that area around the alternator just gets crazy, crazy hot. So we are here in Zaquintos because when I first discovered this issue, I went ahead and ordered a blower and some hose that will basically allow us to pull cool air from some of the bilge areas in the boat and then to blow that onto the alternator to try to give it nice cool air to exchange that heat. So I'm gonna head into town and I'm gonna head to the marine store and see if they've got our parts. Hey baby, are you sleepy? Okay, I'm gonna put you back in, bye. Yep, I'm good, I'll give you a call. Make sure your phone's on ring. Okay, off to the marine supply store. According to Google Maps, it's about a 30 minute walk. Heat's actually okay right now. I'm in the sun, but there's a little bit of a breeze. Yeah, so far so good. Well, the marine store is a little bit outside of town, walking down some not very pedestrian roads, but just about there. Hello. Hi, I'm uh, Jordan. Uh, yes, I'm Andreas. Nice to meet you. Oh, perfect. What? No one? You said the tube? Okay, success. Got all the stuff. My backpack's a little more full than I thought it was gonna be. Not quite able to close it, but that's all right. That hose takes up a lot of space. So, yeah, half hour walk back and I'll be ready to rock and roll. You got a baby delivery? All Thanks right. for coming to get me, baby. <laughs> so the next morning, instead of getting started installing the blower, we actually had to move the boat to a more protected anchorage. There were some really strong winds forecasted for the next couple days, and we were gonna need much better shelter than the town of Zaquintos had to offer. But we were super lucky that these parts came in when they did because we were just able to thread the needle, pick up the parts, and then get out of Dodge before this storm came through. All right, and we are underway. So we're getting a particularly early morning start today because the winds will become really bad for us on our way to this anchorage in the afternoon. So I'm trying to get there as early as we can to try to beat these winds that are coming. It's kind of crazy weather right now. Last night was really, really hot and really humid. The boat is just totally soaked with dew. Now my project of installing the blower and trying to solve our alternator heat issue will have to be put on hold. I'll do that once we get to this anchorage, so probably tomorrow. I don't think that we're at a huge risk of fire when we run the engine this early in the morning because it's not so hot and so the temperatures don't get so bad. Um, also, it doesn't take long to recharge the batteries. So right now the batteries are at like 60%. So the alternator will be running at full output for like 45 minutes and then that's it. So looks like we've got a day of motoring through weird, kind of gross, kind of mucky weather. Oh wow. Ethan <laughs> and I have been sleeping down below. I know, you guys have slept a lot today. <laughs> you've been doing a really good job, buddy. It's 12.40 and I feel like you've already taken three naps. Two, buddy. Okay, dropping. Push this button first. And when it beeps, turn the key. There you go. Think you can do it next time? Mm -hmm. What do you think, bud? Yeah. 
it's a big protected bay, which, you know, after some of the technically difficult, slightly sketchy anchorages we've been in lately, mm -hmm. this is nice. Yeah. I really like this. It's huge. I love when there's no people around, when there's really good protection, and when there's a lot of space. I think Isabella feels the same way. She's like, don't talk to your captain like that. <laughs> the beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> this anchorage is known as Patalas, named after the island of Patalas, the tall hills of which protect the bay from the west and northwest, making this one of the most protected anchorages in the Ionian Islands. It is also one of the most remote, with nothing but farmland for miles around. All right, well, with how much we've been moving lately and how hot it's been, Oso hasn't gotten a whole lot of really good walks in lately. And so I'm gonna take him on an epic journey to try to make it up to the top of that hill slash island. I don't see any trails. It looks like it's gonna be kind of like bushwhacking, but it's gonna be fun. We're gonna have an adventure. Man, look at that. Nice little kayak parking spot. Well, we're definitely bushwhacking. This would have been a really good day to wear pants. <laughs> Just put it that way. Okay, time for a water break for the little man. Okay, drink up, Oso. Weird dog, man. Well, apparently there are cows on this island. Oso just chased them a little bit. Oso, ah! I'm hearing like an alarm going off. I'm wondering if somehow this is private property. I haven't seen any signs or anything, but there's definitely an alarm going off. <laughs> okay, so just looked up the name of this island on Wikipedia. It's called Patelas, and yes, it is a private island. And so the fact that it is a private island and I can hear an audible alarm means that I am heading back to the kayak. <laughs> okay, made it to the kayak and no one shot at us. I was uh, definitely looking over my shoulder a little bit. Right. You good, Bozo? Yeah. All right, Oso, you gotta stop getting us into trouble, man. Uh, oh man, it's been a while since I've been down here. Kind of miss it. So today I'm going to be installing this blower. So really all it is, is it's just a fan, right? It just pulls air from one direction, pushes it in another direction. So the first step is I'm going to mount the hose where I want it to push the air over the alternator and then route it over to where I want to actually install the blower and then I'll mount that. So since hot air rises, I'm hoping that if I simply put the intake side of the hose down into the bilge below the engine, that'll give it access to air that is significantly cooler than the rest of the engine compartment. The other great thing about that bilge area is that it's below the water line, and so the hull is constantly cooling the air down there. It's important to note that in a lot of ways, we're still working out the kinks of this new alternator installation that we initially did over a year ago. And I think this is a good example of how making a major change to one of the core systems on the boat can cause lots of unforeseen challenges down the road. Okay, so the blower is installed, the hose is run, everything isn't perfect. I wanna tidy this up. But before I go nuts, I kind of want to just test it, make sure it works. So if we just turn the key as if we're going to start it, it should start running. Hey, there's a noise. That's always a good thing. Well, mostly. Yeah, I can feel a lot of air coming out of that hose, going right to where the alternator is. It's not touching anything. The hose isn't touching anything bad. Okay, so I'm gonna start up the engine and basically just charge the batteries over the course of the next 50 minutes. I'm gonna close up the engine compartment completely and then in 50 minutes, I'll open it up and test the temperature of everything. Okay, well that went great. Just checked all the temperatures and everything is super 
nominal down there. Nothing's getting excessively hot. And yeah, I'm just super pumped about that solution. Oh man, my back's a little rough right now. Oh, poor Betty. Oh, how are the ladies? Feeling bad for you? <laughs> that was a good week. Yeah, thanks for working so hard, Betty. Yeah. You did a good job. Yeah. You look scraggly. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I ended up having to clean up the engine bay and deal with a couple other issues. And we might have like a salt water leak on the engine, like a raw water leak that's coming from somewhere. So. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. There's always something. But at least we're not going to burn the boat down yeah. because of a hot alternator. That's good. So that's good. Yeah. That's Safety a good thing. First. Safety first. Yeah, don't want to burn our home down. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for this week. So, uh, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> don't burn your houses down. Don't do it. It's not worth don't it. Don't burn your boats down. Mm -mm. If you have air conditioning, go kiss it. If you got a cute baby, go kiss it. <laughs> All right, see you guys next week. Bye.